All right, guys, so our next main topic here keeps us in the world of streaming, but over into HBO Max's domain here, where our, our friend Samba TV again, I think we talked about them the other day with, um, they had some numbers about the Snyder Cut, but now they have some numbers with, and we're in regards to Godzilla vs. Kong, where apparently that has been the most, the most viewed thing on HBO Max, even more so than One Woman 84 when it came out and when Justice League came out, Zack Snyder's Justice League. And I honestly, I found it more surprising that more people watched Wonder Woman than Justice League, in all honesty. Like, that, that was like, I could honestly see Godzilla vs. Kong being the top dog between the three. But I, I don't know. Maybe one, it may be since Wonder Woman was kind of the first one. Like out the gate to be the HBO Max, you know, day and date exclusive thing during the COVID times. It makes sense that it would have pretty high viewership, but we 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 already kind of knew that it had, you know, it didn't perform as well as they were hoping on HBO Max. And um, I don't know. I found it I, again. I found it kind of more surprising that Justice League wasn't able to pass that just with the hype that was around the Snyder Cut for this long, but. John, uh, th it's showing here that 3.6 million people watched uh, HBO Max or uh, watched Godzilla vs. Kong on HBO Max. Do you think uh, you think those are big numbers? Are you surprised that it's uh, you know, was able to surpass Wonder Woman eighty four and uh, Justice League? No, <laughs> um, I mean, partly. I I've been hearing, uh, I've been reading. Obviously, I really enjoyed Justice League when we did our review on it. Um, which you can go back and watch, but I, I love Justice League. I thought it was a great film. I thought it was so much better than theatrical cut. 100%. But at the end of the day, Justice League is a director's cut. It's a substantial director's cut. There's two and a half hours of new footage that nobody had ever seen before. There's a complete reworking of the story. But at the end of the day, the beats are all the same. Batman gets the Justice League together. The Justice League fight and kind of lose to the main villain. And then they have to regroup Superman, bring Superman back and then fight the main villain again. All those beats exist in both the theatrical and the director's cut of the, and the extended cut or the, the Zack Snyder cut of the movie. So at the end of the day, you're essentially talking about a movie that came out a three years ago and B um, was had all the same story beats, just how they played out differently and C it it got z almost zero marketing. Like you didn't, you weren't turning on the television and seeing commercials for, you know, subscribe to HBO max to watch, you know, the new justice league Snyder cut. You weren't turning on YouTube and seeing ads run in front of your favorite YouTube channels saying, you know, go out and watch the Snyder cut. You got all those ads. There was a huge marketing push behind wonder woman and Godzilla. Um, so at the end of the day, no, I'm, I'm not surprised that those two beat it. Um, and I, I think at the end of the day, I think they should have beat it. I mean, they're, like I said, those are both original films that nobody's seen anything about before besides a trailer here, here or there. Um, they're both movies that have, are established characters, established franchises that people are excited for and love. Um, so I, I, people want to make, it's, it's funny. A lot of people, it's, it's, it, there's two sides of this. A lot of people want to make justice league seem like a failure because it didn't reach the associated hype around the movie that everybody talks about. I think, I think when they see the, the it trending on Twitter and things like that, they assume, Oh, well, this movie's going to blow everything else out of the water. But then there's the other side of it that blows it up and says it was the greatest thing ever. And obviously as with everything on social media in the world today, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think justice league was a big success. Um, but I think Kong and Wonder Woman, if the numbers are accurate, and again, these are all numbers that come from third party, you know, analysts, and these aren't official numbers, so they need to be taken with a grain of salt. But if these numbers are accurate, then, um, you know, sure, that makes sense to me that a brand new Wonder Woman movie that nobody's ever seen before would be. And also, I think the other thing you have to take into account, especially with King, King Kong versus Godzilla, is you're taking two characters who normally carry their own movie. Um, and then you're combining them for the first time in what 50 years. I mean, when was the last King Kong versus Godzilla 70s, 60s? Yeah. So, you know, nobody's seen these on, on 
on film in a long, long time. Now, I guess the same could be said of Justice League, except you did see him back in 2017. So, you know, I'm not surprised by these numbers at all. Um, there's also been a lot of box office talk about how uh, the movie is grossed, I think, north of, I think, 69 million, maybe north of 70 million so far in its first two weeks, which is a record for any film since the pandemic began. Mm -hmm. And and again, I mean, you're looking at a lot of different uh, factors that are playing into that. I think a lot of people, the vaccine's out there, so a lot of people are feeling more comfortable. It hasn't, you know, it's not prevalent among everyone, but there's a large portion of society that feels more comfortable going back out now. Um but yeah, I, I'm I'm happy for it. I, I liked King Kong versus Godzilla. I'm glad it's doing well. I'm glad people are watching it. And to be honest, I'm glad HBO Max is getting more uh, getting more push or getting more. Uh, I can't think of the word I want. Um, <laughs> they're getting more penetration into the market, into the streaming market, because mm. I personally like uh, HBO Max and their content, and and I'd like to see the platform do well and they've obviously had their struggles yeah that's the thing i always find weird is that like like i said earlier like disney was able to get the second place in these streaming war wars with just the mandalorian essentially yeah. well hbo max and like h because hbo max is just it, it's just hbo rebranded essentially which again we've talked about it numerous times it was a huge mistake on their part it would have been much better for it to be like warner plus and then you advertise like you get warner plus and it has hbo like tied in with it that's like sure. that's your your pitch like you get all this warner stuff and then hbo is included like much better deal it was very confusing with you had four different hbo's out there since so like it was really stupid but what i find interesting about uh this oh i guess let me finish that thought HBO Max is great. They're always pumping out. HBO is always pumping out content. They're like the king of content when it comes to original like series and like even their original movies are normally good. But like their original series are kind of like it's kind of like exactly like Netflix but better because the Netflix original movies generally kind of suck, but they have a lot of really good original series. It's kind of the same way with HBO Max. It's just that it's always consistent as opposed to Netflix where it's a it's a big wave. Like some of their original stuff is like they just buy it just to say it's an original thing. HBO doesn't do that, historically speaking. What I find interesting too about the Godzilla numbers though is that uh, it's weird because if you look, like the first Godzilla made 529 million, and then King of the Monsters was a substantial decline. You had yeah. King, you had a uh, Kong Skull Island come out in between these movies, and it it, it made more than Godzilla, which I find surprising. Because it wasn't as good, but in my opinion. But then King of the Monsters comes out and was a huge disappointment. So like them being a, like the franchise, you know, kind of combining being the same franchise at this point, coming out the gate and they've made over over 300 million in the pandemic for a franchise that was kind of on the decline in, in a lot of ways is a pretty huge deal. Yeah. And with that... There's been a lot of talk, like ever since the success of Godzilla at the box office, that if these studios are kind of rethinking the whole day and date release thing, like, you know, like, well, could we have made more money if, you know, we didn't do it on here? And my argument with that, honestly, is like, well, look how much money they made with it being day and date. You know what I mean? I think that's the more, that's the story you, you should more be focusing on, not how much more money could they have made if it wasn't day and date because i really don't i think the numbers kind of prove that it's really not making that big of an impact yeah. like the people who want to go to the theaters are still going to the theaters because you have to think too this is also in reduced capacity theaters so yeah. it's like there's only 25 percent of people even in most theaters right now and it was still able to make just it was able to set records for you know covid era box office stuff but i mean it was still able to make over three hundred million dollars, like and now it's like because I think m most people have been thinking like, well, what does this mean for like Black Widow? Like, is Disney looking at this and saying like, you know, did we kick ourselves, you know, you know, in in the ass here? It's like by just announcing that we're gonna do day and date with it, but Godzilla just made all this money at the box office, and like, I don't think it's gonna make as big as an effect as they think, especially since. They're doing the whole premiere access thing with it anyway, so people are going to have to pay for it if they want to watch it on streaming. 
or download it illegally, whichever one you want to do. But then, like, the people who still want to go to the theaters still going to go to the theaters. Like, I think there's a world where day and date can still, like, work. I mean, I think Godzilla versus Kong actually proves that day and date still works. Could it have made more money outside of it? Sure. But in my mind, most of the people who chose to watch it on streaming wouldn't have gone to the theater to see it anyway. Like, they probably only watched it on streaming because they could, mm-hmm. you know? Like they, And then they would probably just wait until they could watch it on streaming then. You know, I yeah. think there's a larger number than people think of just the amount of people who aren't going to go to the theater to see it. Like, just because it's the only place you can see it doesn't mean more people are going to go see it, you know? Yeah, I think I, I, I saw an article that said basically what you just said earlier this week, that the, the success, the relative success of... Kong Godzilla versus Kong shows that doing day and date doesn't hurt the box office or doesn't hurt it to any kind of quantifiable extent. Um, I, I agree with that. I think, I think there are people that are going to go see a movie in a theater and they like the theater experience. That's the reason people go to the theater. That's the reason people put up with people on their cell phones or put up with, you know, the, the risk of having somebody bring their kid into a theater or, or that's, you know, because they enjoy, if it was strictly the fact that people just, just that that was their only way to watch a movie. I don't think a lot of people, you know, for, for the most part, there are some event movies. I think, you know, every year you have, you know, a handful, three, four five movies that are big, giant, you know, movies that permeate the the social consciousness and everybody's talking about in game is the most recent one for example i mean everybody wanted to go see in game because they wanted to be part of that that social conversation about it and so yeah having that be only available in theaters drove people to the theaters to see it but i think there's a huge there 95 percent of the films that come out people will be more than happy to wait until they come home and watch them at home if they're the type of person that wants to see a movie you know at home if they prefer that kind of experience but then there's plenty of people too that if they want to see a movie in the theater that's what i mean just i mean for years that's what when you talk to people about going out where we're going to go out where are you going to go do one of the top i would guess three things that people say when they say they're going out is they're going to see a movie and mm-hmm. we're going to go out to eat we're going to go out to get drinks we're going to go see a movie you know i mean those are we're going to go out to a sporting event those are the, when people say they're going out that's what they mean and just because an, a movie is available at home doesn't mean that people are going to stop going out i mean especially now as as we hope that the pandemic is winding down and people are getting the opportunity to go out more that's going to drive people even more and more to want to go and then of course this all ties in with and we haven't talked about it but the fact that hbo announced and warner brothers announced that this this day and date release is only going to occur through the end of this year they are not extending this to the films that come out next year so that's the thing like Despite how expensive movies like can be, because like we've said it before, like for a family of five to go out and see a movie, that's an expensive venture. You're looking sure. at one, two hundred bucks after if you get like food and everything included. It's still, despite that, one of the cheaper night outs that you can have yeah. for for what you get too. Like it's a full two to three hours worth of entertainment. You get food, drinks. You know, it's 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 a night's worth of stuff. Yeah. So like, and especially if you just go with, you know, yourself or one other person, it's really inexpensive to do it as opposed to you go to a sporting event or something like that. You're paying upwards of a hundred dollars per ticket or at least around there. Yeah. And then the, the inflated the concession prices, which is, they're even worse than the movies. Oh yeah. You know, so it's like, it's way more like going, cause I think Chris Rock even said this when he was interviewed like in the early days of the pandemic, he said that like going to the theater is like exactly what I just said. It's one of the cheaper things that you can even do like yeah. in, in general. And like you get, you get so much out of it. So like, I don't know. I just, I totally think that there's a world where day and date works like, and it's sure. fine because like these big tentpole movies are still going to make the money. No, I mean, in the end, like I said, like, yeah, they probably would have made more. But especially given like the current climate, like there's like not everyone is willing to go anyway. Like, you know, like it just kind of is what it is. And you'll always have those people, like you said, and like like I said before, that who just 
they don't care for the experience of going to the movie. They just want to watch the movie like at yeah. their leisure. One like, of my good friends, I don't think he's been to the theater in 20 years. I, you know, I think, right. you know, as soon as he got a family and kids and stuff, like you were talking about the price of it, but he just doesn't, he doesn't care. He's like, he, in his mind, his rationale is, look, I can wait till the thing, I can, I can wait till I can rent the video for a dollar 99 out of, or 99 cents or whatever it is at Redbox or, or even, you know, better for him. He gets a lot of his movies through the local library and he, he'll just put his name down and, you know, a movie comes out in the theaters in June by October, November, it's out on a home video and he can watch it, you know, with his family. And so, yeah, he waits a few months, but he gets the experience. He still enjoys watching movies. He just doesn't have, he, he also appreciates being able to save that money they used to spend yeah. and, you know, put it towards other family expenses or things. So mm -hmm. yeah, but that's, but that's, he's made his mind up. That's how he's going to watch movies. And I, I think that's, I don't think people make their determination based off of, Oh, this is the only way I can watch it is by going to the theater. So I'm going to go to the theater. No, I think people do it based off of a lot of other factors and that, that is one of them, yes, but it's not as impactful as maybe they're making it out to be. Yeah, and that's the thing too, like the because I believe, like at least right now, and I think I think going forward, it might have been a confirmed thing, but the theatrical window is getting reduced from the ninety days to the forty five days anymore. Yeah, and one of the reasons that's happening is not just because of like day and date and like COVID and all that stuff. It's mainly because like the past couple of years, especially, have proven that most people who are going to see a movie see it within the first two weeks of release, like yeah. in theaters. So like, there's just really no point in having exclusivity in the theater for three months when you're not getting, you're getting a fraction of percentage viewership after the, after two weeks, you're significantly like, you're already getting 50% less. Like each week drops like 50% for most movies. Well, yeah. You just look so, at the box office numbers for yeah. movies for the past 10 years. And yeah, I mean, there's a it's almost like a just a yeah. sharp steep hill that he drops off of yeah you're it's like 75 percent reduction in theater visits after two weeks so it's just not viable in, in addition to that too the new movies when they come out they take over entire cineplexes i mean mm -hmm. they're they're not just shown on two screens they push a bunch of movies off into you know where some screens are showing multiple movies throughout the day because all the other screens are filled up with the single big movie that just came out that week. Yeah. That's the thing. Like any more, it's more viable for theaters and production studios to have a shorter window in all yeah. honesty. Cause like eventually if it gets to the point where no one's coming in to watch a movie in the theaters, it's just costing them money because they could have something else on there. Like more people might be interested in coming and watching like an older movie that they're doing a re-showing of as opposed to the fourth week of who knows what, you know, like, I don't know. Just, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog in week four and five is not, you know, there's not probably something numbers, else yeah. that they can bring out. He may the one to see Sonic the Hedgehog went in weeks one or two. You know? Exactly. And that's just how it is with anything anymore. It's all front loaded. Yeah. So that theatrical window is going to continue to close like 45 days is kind of where it's going to be at now, but I could totally see it. And it, it varies per movie, but like realistically, I would say it's safe to say for any movie after the first month, you're you're getting a fraction of uh, revenue. The only benefit to that is like, and it's different per movie deal, but the theaters, they take like for X amount of time. And normally it's like the first week or weekend or like two weekends, they get a very small amount of the ticket sales. And then as the weeks go on, they get more and more money off the ticket sales because the theaters mainly make their money from the concessions and sure. everything. But the longer they have it in theaters, depending on the deal they made with the, that studio, they'll start to take more and more of a cut from the ticket sales. But again, when you're getting 100 viewings or 100 people come in to watch a movie and you're only getting, you know, five bucks for it, like it's really not just based on how much, you know, we, we've seen in COVID how much, you know, just the rent is for most of these theater venues. It's like thousands of dollars a month. If, you know, in a couple of days or a week, you're only getting 500 bucks from one movie because no one's coming in to see it. It's just kind of costing you money at that point. So, but it ends up working out to like the theaters only make like a third of anything for, of, off of any movie being there from ticket sales in the end. But either way, irrelevant for the story. But guys, question is, what did you think about HBO Max, uh, the, the biggest viewing uh, movie on there to date being Godzilla vs. Kong? Were you surprised that it got more viewership than 
Wonder Woman and Justice League because I kind of am just because, like I said, the Godzilla and Kong franchises were kind of on the decline. So it was just interesting to see that of all the, the, the big movies this year so far, like this is safe to say the biggest one, like bigger than Tenet, bigger than Wonder Woman, bigger than Justice League. So let us know what you think down in the comment section below.